coming to paragraph number 4 Kathmandu is vivid means you can see many things different things mercenary means it is concerned with making money obviously if people are it is a tourist place from tourists we obviously get some get earnings from them and if we are having shops obviously we are having those so as to earn our livelihood so it is connected to money religious obviously religion is related we are talking of hindus we are talking of buddhists with small shrines to flower adorned deities flower adorned means which have been uh, de uh, decorated clear which has been decorated by flowers deities means the lords or goddesses or gods that are there in the temple that are worshipped by people along the narrowest and busy, busiest streets with fruit sellers, fruits, flute sellers, hawkers of postcards, shops selling western cosmetics, film rolls and chocolate or copper utensils and Nepalis antiques. So here we are told many things that are being placed in these shops for selling. Clear everything? These are just the list of the things that are being offered by the shops over there. Film songs blur out from the radios. Blur out means to uh, they are suddenly the volume is raised. So it seems like they are projecting loudly or like loudspeakers you can say. So they are suddenly loudly they are repeating again and again. Car horn sound, car horn sound obviously if there is busy, if there are busy streets Obviously, there will be traffic jam. If there will be traffic jam, people will become impatient. If people will become impatient, they will obviously honk the horn of the car. So, here it is told that car horn is also the bicycle bells ring. Obviously, people on bicycle will also be getting, needing way to go. So, they are also ringing their bells. Stray cows low questioningly at motorcycles. Now, low means making deep sounds. Obviously, you must have seen cows which keep on uh, making deep sounds as if they are questioning to us, if they are asking something to us. Vendors shout out their wares. Now, people who are selling their vendors, they are shouting the name of the things. Wares means the things that they are carrying for selling. So, here again we are given a scene of the environment of that particular place. Clear? Next thing, come to the page number 130. I indulge myself mindlessly. Indulge means to involve yourself. Mindlessly means without thinking. So, the people is saying, the writer is saying that he is involving himself without giving any thought. Buy a bar of marzipan. A corn on the cob roasted in a charcoal brazier on the pavement, rubbed with salt, chili powder and lemon. A couple of love story comics and even a reader's digest. All this I wash down with Coca-Cola and a Nuseatic orange drink and feel much the better of it. Now the author is telling us what has he involved himself in. He is told that he has involved himself thoughtlessly in what thing? In buying a mercy pan, in buying a corn on the cob. Corn on the cob means everyone must have seen corn. It is cylindrical in shape and has yellow, uh, yellow seeds you can say particularly, of which you make popcorns, which when dried and uh, if put on fire, on heat, sorry, it becomes popcorn. So that corn, you can say bhutta or kukri that we say, so that is corn on the cob and he is saying that that was uh, baked by the owner who was selling it on a store. And he also gave, him, uh, gave it to him after rubbing salt, chili powder and lemon on it so as to increase its taste. Now he is saying that he has also bought some comics and a magazine. The name of magazine is Reader's Digest. All this, all this means all these things that the writer has got, that is mercy pan, corn on the cob, all these things he is saying, I wash down means he is eating and drinking Coca-Cola above that so that they can easily be digested. He has no problem in swallowing those things.
clear now nucleotide origin means bring that felt uh, that didn't appeal to him uh, who stays the writer didn't like it was like disgust uh, he was feeling as if why have i taken this it has destroyed it has spoiled the taste of the tap clear so he is telling that all these things i finished and i felt a bit better i consider what route i should take back home now the writer is asking that i am thinking which route should i take back home while returning home which route should i take now he is giving a he will be giving us some options that he is having if i were propelled by enthusiasm for travel per se i would go by bus and train to patna then sail up the gang gangas past banaras to allahabad then up the yamuna past agra to delhi but i am too exhausted and homesick till here first we will see he is giving us the idea what are the options he is having so he is telling us that he can take a bus then a train then he can sail up sail up means going upstream on uh, th through the way of a river going upstream upstream i hope everyone knows upstream and downstream uh, when you go upside towards the top of the river that is upside and when you flow when you come towards with the flow of the river let me help you uh, suppose this is a river the water is obviously flowing downwards so if you are coming with the flow of the water it will be called downstream or sail down but if you are coming in opposite direction it will be called sail up or in the upstream clear yeah? so he is saying that there are uh, this is the pass uh, the passage that i will have to travel if i want to enjoy my travel he enjoys traveling so he is saying that for traveling itself if i have to take then he takes a long route clear yeah? but now he says that i am too exhausted exhausted to the extent that he can't bear anything else and he is homesick as well homesick means the thoughts of his home are coming back and uh, back and again to the writer's mind he is not able to escape from the thoughts of the home he is missing his home particularly that is homesick so he is saying that i am too tired to take that long route so what he takes today is the last day of august he is tell us telling us the date that means it is 31st august go home i tell myself now he is saying that i am telling myself i should go home i am too tired i can't take the long route so i should go home move directly towards home i enter a nepal airlines office and buy a ticket for tomorrow's flight now earlier he had the option of bus train and ship or boat you can say clear yeah? but now what he takes as he is too exhausted so he goes to the airlines office he buys a ticket that means he will be going by air clear coming to sixth paragraph i looked at the flute seller standing in a corner of the square near the hotel in his hand is a pole with an attachment at the top from which 50 or 60 bansuris protrude in all directions like the quills of a porcupine now porcupine is an animal clear now quills of porcupine means uh, the hair of the porcupine if the porcupine gets scared if the porcupine gets scared its hair they will rise uh, it will appear as if needles has been attached to its body they will uh, stand like this in all the four directions so that if anyone is attacking the hairs will pinch that person who is attacking or any animal so it is like a, a his self defense you can say so he is telling us that he saw that a man was standing there with a pole clear yeah? suppose this is a pole and on this he had many flutes flutes uh, is what we say in hindi basuri so he is saying that the flutes were projecting means they were tied in this way all around they were in circular projection 
it was appearing as if in the center is the porcupine and the flutes are in all the four directions like the quills of the porcupine. Clear? The, uh, the flutes were projecting in all the four directions. Okay? So coming forward, they are of bamboo. Flutes are made of bamboo. Uh, how they are made? Bamboo is a wood, you can say. Bamboo is a plant, uh, tree obviously, its wood is taken, it can be hollowed from inside, it is hollowed from inside, so it is very easy to make flute out of it as flute obviously needs a hollow passage, so that so the air that we blow inside it can resonate, so that to produce a melody or any musical sound. So he is telling us that from bamboo, there are cross flutes and recorders from time to time. He stands the pole on the ground, selects a flute and plays for a few minutes. The sound rises clearly above the noise of the traffic and the hawker's cries. He plays slowly, meditatively, without excessive displays. He does not shout out his words. Occasionally, he makes a sale but in a curiously off-handed way as if this were in this will uh, this were incidental to his enterprise sometimes he breaks off playing to talk to the fruit seller i imagine that this has been the pattern of his life for years now what we are told here that the person who is having that pole on which the flutes are arranged in a manner it appears as the pulse of the porcupine he is saying that he is roaming here and there with that pole and after a few minutes he stands at the place he lays the pole outside he picks up a flute of his choice there are different types of flutes there the uh, the pattern of the flute the holes that are made on the flutes the size of the flute the length and the breadth they all are varying because of which different kinds of sounds can be played. So he, what he does, he takes one flute, he plays that flute. Clear? And the, when he plays, when, when he starts playing that flute, what happens? The noise that was going around, be it of other hawkers, be it of honking of the cars, be it of the traffic. All those th uh, sounds they somewhere scumped to the sound of the flute. That means the flute, the sound of the flute can be clearly heard by the people. That means it was audible even when there was huge chaos all around. And he says that if we see other vendors, other hawkers, what they were doing? They were shouting the name of the things that they are having. Yeah? But if we talk of that people, of that person who was, not that people, of that person who was selling that flute, he was not shouting at all. When he wanted, he just took a flute, he started playing it and then he hung it back again and took his pole and just went. And he also made some sales. He's saying he also made some sales, but they were in a way that he, it doesn't matter to him. If they are taking well and good, if they are not taking, then also well, it is well and good. So it seemed as if this was a pattern of his daily routine. Clear? That he did all this daily. He was not that interested in shouting out his sales. Rather, he just played it. If people were pleased, they, if they wanted to have a flute too, they can ask for it from him and he will provide them. But he will not shout. Clear? Yeah. So next is, he also tells her that sometimes he breaks off playing to talk to the fruit seller. Now breaks off. Here we get a word, breaks off. Now breaks off means to stop suddenly. Like when he is playing a flute, he suddenly stops, he sees a fruit seller, he starts talking with that fruit seller. And I imagine this has been the pattern of his life for years as this has been his daily routine, not for a few days, but for life, for many years. Coming to paragraph 7, I find it difficult to tear myself away from the square. Now he is saying tear myself away means 
to part yourself away from that. He is saying that that square, that particular square. Square means uh, just a minute. Square is a place from where you can find your way in all the four directions. All the four directions are open for you. You can go through. Uh, you can go towards any of the direction. So that particular area is called a square. Clear? Yeah? So he is saying that I am standing on that square where the person is playing his flutes and I can't take myself, I can't force myself to move from that area. I am too attached or I am too pleased, I am too involved in listening to that sound. Flute music always does this to me now. He is telling us that flute mu music really appeals to him. So he's saying that it always happens to me whenever I listen to flute music. It is at once the most universal and the most particular of sounds. Now he's saying that this is universal, means everywhere it can be heard and it is particular of its type. How it is particular? As it seems uh, similar to the sound of a person. As if when you blow the flute, it will appear to you as if someone is singing those words or those notes. It is quite similar to the sound of a human. There is no culture that does not have its flute. Now he is telling that every culture is having its own flute. And he is naming the cultures. The read name, the recorder, the Japanese Shaka Kuchai, the deep Bansuri of Hindustani classical music, the clear or breathy flutes of South America. So everyone is having, every culture is having theirs on flute. What the first is the size, the length, the breadth or the pattern of the horns. The high pitched Chinese flute, even Chinese are also having their on flutes. Each has a specific fingering and compass. So here we are told that the flutes differ in the fingering, means the pattern, the fingers, like if this is a flute, there are holes in it. One has to place the fingers upon the holes and the holes will only be opened if that particular knot is to be played. So he is telling us that they only differ in the fingering, the placing of the fingers or the pattern of the holes or the compass, means the length or breadth of the flute. It weaves its own associations. Now, every the uh, specific flute has its own associations, which can be weaved through the patterns. Yet, to hear any flute is, it seems to me, to be drawn into the commonality of all mankind, to be moved by music clauses in its phrase and sentences to the human voice. Here again, we are told it is similar to human voice. Its motor force too is living breathing. It's, it too needs to pause and breathe before it can go on. Now, here we are told about commonality. Commonality means sharing features. Sharing features. Now, if we talk of flutes, what are the features that are being shared? It is hollow. It has holes that are based upon some pattern. Okay? It only varies in the pattern of the holes, its length or its breadth. But the prime purpose or the way it is blown, it is played is through the sound, through the breadth. Now again he tells us that commonality over here is sharing of features. The flutes are similar directly or indirectly. Now the another sharing where it comes is that of human voice. Every person has its own voice. Similarly, when any person will blow that sound, blow sound, blow air in that flute, it will produce a different type of sound or music that would be common to his voice, that would share features with his own voice. Clear everyone? And it appears as if, if many flutes are being played, it appears as if human voices are talking. Another thing that we are told, the motor. How is it played? How is the flute played? Obviously with breath, we inhale, we exhale. And when suddenly, suppose we have ran a distance, 
that was too large for us. We have not been accustomed to running that. What happens? We start panting. We start losing our breath. We have to pause for a while and take a deep breath. Isn't it? Similarly, the writer is telling us that just like the humans, the flute has also to be stopped at one place so that the person playing that flute can inhale. And after inhaling only, he can blow air into that flute. Clear? So just like humans, flute has also to be stopped so as to breathe. So as breath is a living force of humans, without breath, humans can't survive. Similarly, if air is not blown through the flute, there is no music that can be produced from that particular flute. Clear everyone? Coming to the last, end, uh, last paragraph we have. That I can be so affected by a few familiar phrases on the Bansuri surprises me at first. For on the previous occasions that I have returned home after a long absence abroad, I have hardly noticed such details and certainly have not invested them with the significance I now do. Now he is telling us that I can't believe myself. The writer couldn't believe he, herself that he can be so impressed, so affected by a few phrases on that basuri or flute. Because many times he has returned home from that way, but he has never noticed so minutely the surrounding of Kathmandu, the way he is doing now. And never before had he thought of writing his experiences or these details in his writing the way he is doing now. This is the investment that, is make, that he is making to the work, to this part that we are reading. He has invested his thoughts, his details, his intelligence that he has used in capturing the details so minutely and presenting it to us. So I hope it is clear to everyone. So if we talk about the title, everyone can see that we have in this chapter, particularly Kathmandu has been talked of. So our title is absolutely correct. It is apt as we get to know about each and every detail of Kathmandu. Isn't it? And Kathmandu, the temple of Kathmandu has been contrasted. So, if we talk about the theme, we get two basic themes over here. One is universality and another is unity in diversity. So, universality has been depicted through the flute seller who has uh, the flutes of different cultures with him. And he is playing those foods. And the thing that makes universal is the breath of the human. Because without air, that flute is without light. Only after human is blowing air into it, it turns to light. Clear? It becomes alive. Similarly, unity in diversity. We can see that people from many areas are staying in Nepal. Be they from Tibet. Be it the tourist, though they are not allowed inside the temple, but they are peacefully coexisting over there. They have different interests, they have different cultures. Different cultures can be depicted through the different flutes, also that the flute seller was having, that he was carrying with him. Clear? But they are peacefully coexisting. And co this, this effect, the idea of coexistence, can also be seen. Through the contrast that has been drawn between the stupa and the Kathmandu temple. We can obviously see that as in the, at the area of stupa there was not much crowd. There was stillness. There were things were in a particular sequence. They were patterned. But if we talk about the temple of Kathmandu, there what we see that there was chaos all around. Everything was in a hurry. Every people was in hurry. They were not caring about others. They were busy in themselves. 
but still they were coexisting there they were helping each other they were related to each other and they had a peaceful coexistence similarly we should have or we should also have a peaceful coexistence culture doesn't matter if you have to follow your culture it's good you can follow but it should not pose any harm to other persons clear everyone so i hope this chapter is clear to one and all that was all from my side now i i really hope that you will be able to frame your answers clear so that was all kids see you in the next class bye bye thank you